a special interview, so special, Kanan is going to do it. Kanan, good morning. What do you got for us? Man, good morning, Jacob. So we have a special guest here with us today. I mean, not only a special guest, former Houston Texan. I mean, former Houston Texan cornerback. <laughs> I mean, former, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we could keep going on. But this is, the, this is the best Houston Texan cornerback of all time. Jonathan, man, how are you doing today? I'm good. Man, you. thanks for stopping by, man. So I just want to get straight to it. Saturday, big primetime game against the Colts. Uh, win or go home. I mean, we're pretty much like in the playoffs right now. Uh, if you want to just technically call it that way. Um, so with this being the primetime game, the Texans are usually playing you know, Sundays at, at noon. You know, is this game going to kind of add more pressure to the team? Um, would this affect the team at all, if any? Uh, not at all. You know, I think you live for the moments to get into the primetime games where you're playing in front of a national crowd. I think all year long they've been preparing for this moment. I think the head coach, D'Amico Ryans, have his team ready. He's been there before as a player, and he understands all the distractions that come with it. But at the same time, it's a lot on the line. So I think, you know, just having those guys prepared all week for, you know, the environment, how hostile the crowd is going to be. And then the uh, game is on the line for the playoffs, so that's a lot of pressure. I really root for you guys. Uh, no offense to the Colts, but, man, this kid, he's been having a remarkable story. I'm talking about C.J. Stroud. I mean, it's been amazing. Like before his injury, he was already in the MVP conversations, uh, which is crazy for your rookie year. I mean, I've, even, I've heard people even say he's top 10, top eight. I mean, he'd be <laughs> top five. I mean, I was like, wow, this is a rookie. But um, if there was a silhouette for CJ Stroud, if you have to make any comparison for CJ, who would it be? I mean, from the way he passes, his, his accuracy, who would you compare, who's the closest comparison to CJ Stroud? Um, that I can remember with my time playing as a young guy, and it's funny that we playing the coach, so I'll say Andrew Luck. Mm. Um, I remember him coming in and just winging it all over the yard. You know, he made some plays with his legs, but mm. for the most part, he's able to command that offense and turn that team around single-handedly. So just seeing the effect that CJ's having on this team, that reminds me of Andrew Luck a lot. I actually never heard that one. That's a, that's <laughs> a really good one. I'm about to, I'm about to start saying that one. <laughs> well, uh, now I want to transition to, um, I know you used to play cornerback yourself. I played cornerback in high school. I know people don't really care about that, but. Um, <laughs> I but, do. <laughs> but, Derek, but Derek Stingley Jr., that's who I want to talk about. Um, in 2016, he was 15 years old. Um, I actually was an intern at the Advocate newspaper in Baton Rouge. And I got a chance to, to write a story about this kid. But at the time, he was very shy. He didn't really say too much. So his dad said, you know what? Any questions you have, ask me. So he seems like a well-reserved kid, quiet kid. Um, but on the field, he's making a lot of noise. I mean, he's, he's, he's locking up these receivers. He's making big tackles. Uh, what does the film say about Derek Stingley uh, that we, us, us fans may not recognize on the field? Um, it says he's getting better week in and week out. I think early in the year he had a few knick-knack injuries, which is part of the game. And you look at last year, coming into this year's scheme change, and it's a lot of pressure when you drafted that high, when you've always been one of the top guys. I think he's done a tremendous job of just, you know, blocking the noise out and each week trying to get better at his craft and be a leader for the team because we need him to be a number one corner. And I think as a young player, it's kind of hard to understand that. But he's starting to step into that role and take leadership on it, and I think we're seeing the results from it on the field. So right now, there's one lock for the Pro Bowl, and that's Laramie Tunsil. Um, there's six alternates. Um, if all seven make the, the Pro Bowl, this will be the second most since 2013. And I know you were part of that Pro Bowl class. Um, so with Laramie Tunsil, guys like him, Derek Stingley, CJ Stroud, Will Anderson, um, with these guys, are these part of the new culture for D'Amico Ryans? Is this what he's trying to develop with young guys? Uh, you know, because he came in as a defensive coach, uh, former linebacker. We, we had questions about, can he develop the offense? Can the offense get better under D'Amico Ryans? But the offense is top 10 in scoring and total offense. Um, so what has D'Amico Ryans done with his team to help them out offensively? I think he's surrounded, you know, obviously you name Laramie. You always want to have a young quarterback, somebody that can protect your blind side. So Laramie's top guy in this league at doing that, making CJ feel comfortable in the pocket so he can execute the offense. And I think Coach Ryan's, you know, developed that mentality, not as just a defensive coach. We're trying to put points up, be a smart football team, take, you know, chances when we have chances to make explosive plays. And you look at what Bobby as the offensive coordinator, Gerard, the quarterback coach, those guys are, you know, putting a great game plan around the offense. And D'Amico is able to step back some and focus on the defense while those guys execute the game plan on offense. Yeah, I definitely think Gerard Johnson doesn't get that much credit. He's the quarterback coach for the Texans. Um, but surely, uh, last but not least, let's look at the, the overall AFC landscape. Um, you have the, the number one team, the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, outside of them, it's kind of it looks a little shaky. Um, of course, you have the defending champs in the Kansas City Chiefs. You can't count out Mahomes. 
But there are questions around that team. Uh, do they have enough receivers? Uh, Cleveland Browns with Joe Flacco. He's 38 years old <laughs> now. You know, he won a Super Bowl 10 years ago, but now he's 38. Does he still have any left in his tank? Um, same with the Buffalo Bills. There's questions surrounding Josh Allen and Miami Dolphins and Tua. Is this the Cinderella year for Houston? That's what, it's, that's what, <laughs> that's what I'm kind of getting right now. It may be a little Cinderella story. It's definitely a chance. I think, you know, you always want to give yourself a chance when you start the year off. You say you want to win the division, make the playoffs, mm -hmm. you know. Well, first make the playoffs, win the division. You know, if you win the division, it guarantees you to get in there. But like you said, it's open as it ever been this year. Normally, early in the year, you have the same team that you knock as the favorites, and then it kind of stays the same throughout the course of the year. There's been a few changes throughout the year, like you said, with Kansas City Chiefs and those being, guys being vulnerable. And you look at what Buffalo started out hot, and now they hit a little rough patch. Yeah. So I think for this Houston Texans team, we're starting to get hot at the right time and I think having CJ back healthy to lead this team like he's done all year it's a perfect way to go into the playoffs you have any score predictions for Saturday no nah, I mean I just want to take the win man however it come man it can be 41 to 40 <laughs> or it can be three to zero right right once we get the win man we get the win oh man nice man well, again Jonathan man thanks for stopping by the newsroom thanks for stopping by the station always always welcome to stop by uh, thanks for having me oh, yeah no problem man Sorry. So, Jacob. Um, Jonathan, Kenny, thank you for coming. This is awesome. <laughs> it feels like a very legitimate here in sports uh, broadcast, maybe the best that we've had right here, at 9.50 on a Friday before the Texas game. Maybe we'll invite you back and uh, because you did so well. Absolutely. Looking forward, looking forward to it. And you too, Kenan, of course. Appreciate it, All Jacob. Right. Thank you so much. No problem.